champion entering the ring right now, Ricky Jackson. He's looking to get back on track right now after his knockout loss to Bobby Chez back in December. That's his opponent, Warren Williams. Williams coming out of Memphis, Tennessee. 9-7-1 record, but seven knockouts, has some punching power. Jackson, not particularly known for his punching power, has 12 knockouts in his 19 wins. And it was nice to hear, as a manager, <laughs> McKnight talk about, I'll put whoever they put in front of me. One thing to look out for here, Warren Williams is a southpaw. And wondering if Ricky Jackson took this fight on somewhat short notice if he had a chance to work out much with Southpaws. And we're going to go up to our ring announcer, Carlos Silva, for the official introductions. Here we go for the third bout of the evening. Six rounds, heavyweights. And when the bell sounds, the man in charge, Ronnie Ralston. Here we go, red fight fans. Out of the blue corner, wearing the multicolored trunks. From Memphis, Tennessee, weighing in at 250 pounds, with a record of nine wins and only seven defeats and seven knockouts, help me welcome Warren Williams. And his opponent, to my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white colored trunks and black trim. From Houston, Texas, Weighing in at 217 pounds, with a record of 19 wins, coupled with only one defeat and 12 big knockouts, help me welcome Ricky Action Jackson! Okay, gentlemen, you see the instructions in the dressing room on a good clean fight. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Catch him up. Six rounds, heavyweights. Ricky Jackson looking to get his life back on track here. Comes in at 217 pounds. Rather heavy for him, not a career high, but heavy where he's concerned. Other than that, a slight reach advantage. Warren Williams, 34 years of age. Jackson, 30. Needs his career to get kick-started again. And Bob, got a fighter like him. Out of, and we start round number one, somewhat of a devastating defeat by the hands of Bobby Chez. What's going through his mind right now, a fighter looking to get back on track? What are they telling him in the corner? Well, you know, Ricky Jackson never had an amateur career, so, you know, the early part of his professional career was just that. Even though he's 30 years old, uh, you know, he didn't have those miles on him as an amateur. And, uh, you know, Chez a very savvy fighter. It was really like going to school for him. And I think what he showed in that fight was tremendous heart, you know, in, in the fact that he, he didn't have a good night. And, uh, you know, Chez can go all night when it's going his way, and he's setting the pace, and that's exactly what he was doing and what he was looking to do. Uh, you know, Jackson took a bad beating in the fight, but I, I think, uh, you know, he showed everybody a, a lot of heart, and, you know, which is what he showed continuously in this business thus far in the gym. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's no quitter, and, uh, you know, he's gotten off the deck several times early in his career to, uh, you know, to win fights. And, you know, the Chez, it was just a matter of, I think, uh, youth against experience, even though the ages were similar. A little more than a minute gone by in round number one was scheduled for six. That's Ricky Jackson we're talking about. He's in the white shorts with the black stripe. Warren Williams in the multicolor. What about his weight, Bob? He's coming in at 217, which is which is heavy for him. Well, he's a heavyweight. You know, that's what he wants to fight at. You know, there's no money in the cruiserweight division. And, uh, you know, I think he knows that. And, and uh, you know, he's an athlete. The guy, you know, whatever he puts on, he's not going to, you know, when he puts on weight, unlike maybe Mr. Williams, he's not going to gain it all uh, in certain parts of his body. You know, Ricky carries his weight symmetrically pretty well. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, this is the money division. And, uh, you know, that's where he wants to compete. Okay, now Jackson comes back in today. He's fighting Williams, who's very obviously a southpaw. Do you think do you think he trained to fight a southpaw in this fight, or because this was a, a sort of a late no. add-on? No, no, he, he certainly didn't train to fight a southpaw, but he's fought better for several southpaws, you know, probably better, more well-thought of opponents than Warren Williams. He fought uh, Troy Jefferson and uh, Jesse Shelby, uh, you know, went eight and ten rounds respectfully with the two of those, and, uh, you know, he's seen some of that in his career. He's experienced with that even though he didn't have any amateur experience. Hey, Williams seems to be rocking him a bit here, though, in round number one. 
Williams has some punching power. He's got seven knockouts in his nine wins. He's got Jackson pinned up in the corner. Well, Williams is touching him with some quick, quick-handed little combinations. I don't know that he's he's landing any big shots on Ricky Jackson, but. Uh, Ricky's got 15 a seconds to go in round number one, and Williams certainly the busier of the two thus far in round number one. And potato by Bolden giving him a little bit of a talking to Bob. No, Potato Pie is going to try to get him settled down. In. And I think what he, Rick's got to do in this fight is stop trying to outbox this guy and go in and fight him a little bit. I don't think, you know, Williams took this fight on short notice too. And obviously he's not in the kind of shape probably that Ricky Jackson is. You can't let a, a southpaw sit there and get cute with you. You got to go out there and fight him and... Uh, so we'll take a replay, take a look at it here of uh, round number one action. Well, and there's that Ricky with that straight left hand, and there he follows him into the corner. Really, just kind of grazing punches there. He didn't really hit him with any shots, but early in the replay, we saw that straight left hand. Round number two was scheduled for six. Ricky Jackson in the white shorts with the black stripe. Warren Williams in the multicolor shorts, sort of the swim short apparel, the cruise wear, let's call it. And we're joined right now in uh, round number two by our other boxing analyst and uh, well-known boxing manager, manager of Obed Sullivan, Steve Munisteri. And Steve, you've been in a situation like this with professional fighters where you have to bring them back after a loss. Ricky Jackson's in there tonight. Um, seeming a little tentative for you? I would be tentative as well if I had been knocked out as badly as uh, Bobby Chez, but I, I think he's getting his feet under him, and I expect him to come on here in the second and third rounds. But it's a difficult situation for fighters, especially if they haven't been knocked out like that before. What I think Ricky wants to do here is, you know, settle down and throw the jab and then the straight right hand to the body, you know, really start feasting on that, which is obviously Williams' weak spot and not, uh, you know, not trying to parry out there. And, uh, you know, Williams has got a quick set of hands for a big guy like that. And, uh, you know, Ricky's got a loop there. Nice left hook by Jackson. Caught Williams, which is a, even a better finishing punch. You know, on the, make it the third punch of a combination. Jab, right hand, left hook coming back. Williams remains, though, the busier of the two as we're almost halfway gone in round number two. Williams has been stopped three times in his career, once by Gerald Mitchell. Samson Pula stopped him in one round, and the infamous Vaughn Bean stopped him in two. There you see Jackson trying to get down on that body, which is just what he wants to do, and Williams trying to act like it's not bothering him all. Ricky's got to go forward. He's got to go forward with this guy. He doesn't want to stand on the outside and let Williams use those quick hands on him. Wants to move forward and be the, you know, be the man. Be the boss. Something I'd worry about if I was Ricky's manager is you only have a six-round fight here, so he doesn't have time to really give two or three rounds to Williams. He needs to come on fairly shortly. And I do think he's been much more aggressive this round. And having taken the beating he did with Bobby Chez, he has to be a little tentative to stuff, but those cobwebs should be shaken off. Jackson's got 12 knockouts in his 19 wins, and a lot of them came with inside the six-round distance. As a matter of fact, He's only, only one of those knockouts came after round six. And that was back in 93 against Willie Washington. So if he's going to take him out, he usually takes out his guys early as we're at the 32nd mark in round number two. But you can see what kind of fighter Williams is as Ricky Jackson's landing the harder punches. Jackson, Williams has got some quick hands, landing a couple little combinations. Ricky's got to get in there and force this fight. There's well, something about a comeback fight, Arnie. You need to win your comeback fights. <laughs> I've heard that before, Steve. That's an old adage. <laughs> Winning comeback fights is good. As we come to the end of round number two, we'll see what Ricky can put together. Ricky Jackson shakes his head when he gets back to, round, to the corner at Potato Pie Bolden. He doesn't seem happy with his performance, Bob. 
No, I don't think so. He, he started to get some things done early in this round, but he, he let Williams, you know, play it off and, uh, you know, get back to fighting him on the outside, which I think favors Williams. Warren Williams taking the fight on short notice. No youngster by boxing standards. He's 34 years old, and we take a look at action here from round number two. Another pretty good round for Warren Williams. Ricky Jackson looking to get looking to get unspun here as we look at one of the big boxing fans in Houston. She'll be at the Ritz later. The third round, we're here at the Ramada Astrodome Hotel in Houston, Texas. Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal, along with Bob Spagnola and our guest commentator, Steve Munisteri. Potato pies tell him, get mean in there. That's, uh, you know, I can hear him from here, and I, he's just, uh, he knows what he's got to do. He's got to go in there, make this guy fight, make him exchange punches. You know, this guy doesn't really want to fight Ricky Jackson, and I think if Ricky goes forward and takes over this fight, that, that's exactly what he'll do. And, and he does need to take it over quickly, Bob, because I think he has to win three out of four rounds just to draw even. I think he's two points down for the third. But that's what he wants to do, what he's doing right here. He got started in the second round, but he let Williams kind of talk him out of it. Williams wants his pace to be slow. He just wants to throw a couple quick three-punch combinations, which he throws, starting and finishing with the right hand. And, uh, you know, Jackson's got to get in there and rumble. And he, he hit him with another good shot, good body punch. There. That's what he's got to do. He's got to make a fight out of this. I shorten up his punches a little bit, but... And we got a little bit more than a minute going by in round number three. And that was Jackson dropping in a right hand lead. The classic thing we need to do against the Southpaw. Starting to get on track now and get comfortable with Williams in there. Much better round for Ricky Jackson. Good body shots by Ricky Jackson, too. And there's a big hook by Jackson. See, this is what he's got to do. He's got to make a fight out of this. Don't stand on the outside and let this guy box him. Williams doesn't have, can't match power with Ricky Jackson. He's trying to just outpoint him here. Jackson's in the white shorts with the black stripe. Multicolored shorts, Warren Williams. He's a southpaw. The TV set's not backwards. I think Jackson's hurt him a couple of times, Bob. I don't know if you agree. No, I think he has, and he hurt him again right there. He's got to fight this guy. He's got to get in and run. You know, he doesn't like to. He likes to box, Ricky does, but sometimes you got to get out there and fight, and this is just one of those times. And it looks like he's winning the rumble when he does go to rumble. Oh, he, he definitely is. Williams can't exchange power with him. He's, he's got quick little hands and good combinations, even for a guy built like he is. But Jackson's a stronger man in there. Williams stopped three times in his career. And you see Williams taking big gulps of air. Last time was back in 93 against Vaughn Bean. Hasn't been stopped since November of 93. What about winning streak his last past March. Leonard Long and then of course Ricky Jackson has not fought since he got stopped by Bobby Chez back in December in the sixth round. That was for the WBU Super Cruiserweight title. Jackson having to come in under 209. He weighs 217 pounds for this fight today. Second heaviest of his pro career. Heaviest being 223 against Calvin Beasley. That was back in October of 94. But Jackson really getting some power shots off on Williams here in this round. That's what he wants to do. Let this guy know, hey, I'm the man, I'm the boss, I'm going to hammer you in here. Wanting to keep the blows up by Ronnie Rostin as Jackson dropped in a couple of low blows here at the end of round number three. A good one for Ricky Jackson coming back. Tired Warren Williams, they're trying to revive him in a corner. I think this kind of pace is much better suited for Ricky Jackson than Williams. I don't think Williams can fight like this at this kind of a pace, and I think Jackson, although he's extended some energy, he can fight like this. I've watched him for years. And Steve, I would have expected, as Bob said, a little faster pace from Ricky in the first two rounds, but he's certainly caught up now. We take a look at action from round number three, and here's that right-hand lead to really turn the tide in the round and possibly at this point in the fight. Certainly, momentum right now in favor of Ricky Jackson. There was a very good left hook following up also. Doing all the right things now against the southpaw. Well, 
What Ricky Jackson's got to do in this round is pick it right up where he left it off. He cannot, you know, lay back into things. Let, let Williams get in. He's boxing on the outside. He's got to go right out there and pick up where he left off, being the man, throwing some heavy shots on this guy, backing him up and setting a fast pace. I still have him down by a point, so if he really wants to win the fight, he needs to try to win all three rounds. Well, I got to tell you, though, I looked at Warren Williams between rounds, and he looked totally exhausted. That pace that Jackson set in the third round really put Williams behind the eight ball. And Ricky's got to be see if he can keep up that pace right now. It's only a six-round fight, as Steve, you pointed out. I've got him down two rounds to one. But right now, Ricky Jackson seems in total control, and it wouldn't surprise me if he stops William in this round. He's a fresher fighter, you know, he, he needs to he's let it all go. He sure can't save anything, you know, he's been, he's used to going eight, ten rounds, and, and Williams, like you said, was tired, he, he doesn't want to let him rest. But he can't afford to let off even a single round, because if you're down by a point with only three rounds to go, you really need to win all three rounds, otherwise you have a draw. And he's slowing down just a little bit. I think he should keep that pace, keep that jab going, keep the pressure on Williams. A little more than a minute gone by in round number four. Again, this is scheduled for six. Williams misses a looping shot, falls down, which even more points out just how tired he is at this point. Jackson tries to wade in. Again, he hasn't fought since December. And you can see Williams is looking to hold the minute he gets in there. I think if Jackson will just put some pressure on him, he could take this guy out of there in the next round or two. But if he doesn't, you know, anything can happen with the judges. Along those same lines, he's letting Williams back in the fight now. Williams starting to move that jab, and Jackson doesn't want to fight him from the outside. He wants to go in like he just did there and work, work that belly. Good right hand lead again, and that's the punch that did it for him last round to turn the tide. I think he's hurt again, Arnie, and now you have a couple of good body shots on top of the head shot. I think you're right, Steve. Under a minute to go here in round number four, but plenty of time, though. And again, Ronnie Ralston warning Ricky Jackson to keep the blows up. Jackson doing what he wants to do here, though, and Williams has slowed down tremendously. Williams hurt, too. He was about ready to tip forward, and it's actually Jackson that's holding Williams up at this point. He needs to get away from him and let Williams fall down. Just about 30 seconds to go. Still plenty of time for Jackson to capitalize on what seems to me to be a very depleted Warren Williams at this point. Very good right hand. And it's the right hand lead that's working for him. The Sunday punch when you're fighting the southpaw. But he needs to follow up and finish this guy off. He can't let him have a single round back in. Yeah, Williams' legs are getting very heavy here. Williams is going to survive the round, though, as Ricky Jackson gives him a body shot to take back to the corner with. Warren Williams talking to his corner man like he's ready to quit, like he's had enough. He's not sitting down, and I think they're going to wave it off. He's saying that he doesn't want any more. And the irony is, Arnie, it's only two rounds to two. So he's going to quit. Ready. His corner man's telling Ronnie Ralston it's over. It's he over. caught a thumb in the eye or something. He can't see. That's it. And Ricky Jackson successfully returns to the ring. First fight since that loss to Bobby Chesney improves to 20 and 1. That's his 13th knockout. Warren Williams drops down to 9 and 8. And we're going to take a look here. Look at him. You can see how tired Williams was over. Looping left hand misses. Ricky Jackson just watches him fall down to his knees. Not a knockdown, but he was eating uppercuts inside and right hand leads throughout the round. There's one of those body shots just on the borderline. Ricky got two warnings from Ronnie Ralston in the fight. It's all academic now because he's got the big W and the big KO. And we're, and we're going to go up now to Carlos Silva with our official announcement. Fight fans, here we go. The opponent failed to answer the bell for the fifth round. So we have a winner by TKO. Out of the red corner, Ricky Action. Jackson! Once again. Once again, there you have it. Ricky Jackson improves the 20 and 1, 13 knockouts. And Bob, he's got to be real happy now. You know, he gets that, the cobwebs behind him, the ghost of Chez behind him, and uh, continues on with his career. He seems to me a lot more comfortable with this weight. He seems to carry the 217 with no problem.
No, he, he had to come in on the 209 for that for that chess fight. He's a, Ricky's an athlete. 